So here is the finished Great Dane dog and this one is pretty large. I wanted to show him next to my large crochet horse and they are pretty equivalent in size. And then here is a side shot. So the Sco I named him Scooby, my Great Dane dog. This is the one that's going to the Helen Woodward Animal Shelter fundraiser for their Mardi Gras. There's a $25 Petco gift card that's going to go with this dog. I'll put the Petco card in the um, zipper pouch on the back. And you can see the nice doggy bone pouch that I made for the inside of the dog is pretty deep. And I wanted to show him without his hat on as well. He is just really adorable. I can't get over how cute he is. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle and I use one with a large eye and a sharp point as well as a pair of scissors and if you're using a zipper I used a 9 inch zipper if you want a secret compartment so here's an example of how I made a, a secret compartment this will go on the back the top back of the dog so I used a 9 inch zipper and then I also used a decorative fabric for the inside and I put my label on the inside. So this is an option. You don't have to put the zipper compartment, but I will show you how I made mine in case you want the zipper. If you don't want the zipper, then you would just keep crocheting the length and I'll let you know when I get to that portion. So if you like the fabric that I used on the inside, I used a fat quarter 100% cotton fabric piece and mine measured 18 inches by 21 inches and I used the whole thing for mine. To hold my fabric in place as I sewed it and I used a sewing machine for mine. I used my Dritz 120 long pearlized pins. You only need a couple of them but I like these pins. They worked really well. If you like the label that I used, I used my computer fa printer fabric value pack. So this is will last me for a very long time. I have 10 sheets and it's by June Taylor. I had gotten purchased mine from Joanne Craft Store. Here's the size and it's 100% cotton fabric. So I've already finished one head and I really love how it turned out. But you can see how I had fun with the colors. So I'm going to show you the colors that I used for this one. But you can change it up. I'm going to show you some optional colors that you can use as well. So I really like how the head turned out for this one. This one's going to um, be the one that looks... Well, they're both going to look very similar, but I'm going to show you the different colors that I used. And you can see the subtle differences on video. So the yarn that I used for this one for the snout, I used Red Heart with Love and the color was tan. So I used one skein of this one. For this color, I used Red Heart Super Saver, one skein, and the color was buff. For the tongue, I used Red Heart Super Saver, some of my leftover yarn. You only need one skein of this, and the color was cherry red. For the eyes, I used the Glittery White. So there's two different brands of yarn. It's a medium for 100% cotton, not 100% cotton, 100% acrylic yarn. And you could either use Karen Simply Soft Party or Red Heart. Red Heart also has a Glittery White yarn. Both of them would work. This is some of my leftover yarn, so you'll only need one skein. But any white, medium four, 100% acrylic yarn would work for this project. 
You'll also need a black colored yarn for the nose and for the eyes. I just used my Craft Smart Value yarn, but you could use a Red Heart Black yarn as well. And you'll only need one skein, just a little bit of it. You'll have lots left over. The alternate colored yarn that I used is an Erin or a beige colored yarn. It's a medium four, 100% acrylic yarn. Now on video tutorial, I chose this beautiful color by Crafters Secret. And the color is light top. Actually, it's pronounced light taupe. T-A-U-P-E, taupe. So for mine, I'm going to be combining these colors. So you'll only need between three to four skeins of yarn for this project, depending on what color you use more of. You may need two of the more dominant color that you're using. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make the snout. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make this portion of the snout. So I'm going to take my yarn and we're going to start with a slip knot. So just take and fold your yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook, and then we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four on video tutorial, but you're going to make a chain of 15. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, make a chain of 15, and then come back. So after you make your chain of 15, then you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into that second chain from the hook, and then bring up a loop to complete your single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch back across. Now you should have a stitch count of 14. Then we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain one and then turn your work. And you're not going to go into the stitch at the base of the chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop and complete a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across and when you finish this row you should still have a stitch count of 14 counting your first chain one that you made. So now we had we started with a starting chain of 15 and then we made a single crochet back for our first row which gave us a stitch count of 14 then we chain one and then made our second row of one single crochet into each stitch which was a stitch count of 14. So now you're going to chain one again and you're going to repeat this chain one, turn your work and make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to continue chain one single crochet into each stitch maintaining the stitch count of 14 until you complete an additional 10 rows so this one will count as your first one and you need a total of 10 more so this counts as one so you keep making them until you finish 10 more and you're going to chain one for each row and make one single crochet in every stitch completing each row and each row should have a stitch count of 14. 
So then this is how your work should look when you're finished. You see how I have a straight edge on both sides. Then as soon as you finish your last single crochet on your last row, you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through. And you can go ahead and just bring a little bit through and then cut it. So the first part of this snout is completed. So the measurement is about eight centimeters across and seven centimeters. So eight by seven centimeters. Now using the same color, I'm going to show you how to make the panels for the sides and the top and the bottom of the snout. So we're going to be making it the same way except for a different starting chain. So you're going to take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and the loop around the hook. So I'm just going to show you four, but you need to make a chain of 23. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 23, and then come back. So again, after you finish your chain of 23, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across, just like you did before. So now you should have a stitch count of 22. And just like you did before, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And this will count as the first row for the additional rows. So you need 11 additional rows. And again, don't count this one that we already finished. This will count as your first one. And you need a total of 11 additional rows where you chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into every stitch across. And then come back. And then also remember that each row that you make for the additional 11 rows, each row will have a stitch count of 22. So this is what mine looks like after I've finished. And you're going to need a total of four of these. So a total of four, and we've completed one. And each of these boxes on my um, table represent one inch. So I just wanted to give you um, an estimate for the measurement. So this one measures in width. It measures one, two, three, four, five inches. And then for the height is three inches. One, two, three. So now I have all four pieces and also the end of the snout. So now we're going to sew the pieces together. So you're going to want to get your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn on it. So now I'll take two of the panels and then place them together. And you want to have the wrong sides facing you and the right sides together. So whatever side that you want showing on the right side will be placed together. And then I have my tapestry needle and the same colored yarn. And I'm just going to take and grab a stitch on both panels. We're going to stitch them together. So then you just go ahead and tie a knot. Then you're just going to take and go in and out and sew it all the way across. 
So now I have one side sewn together. This is what it looks like on the right side. And then the wrong side will have a ridge. So you'll know that you want to keep that ridge on the wrong side. You don't want it to be on the right side. So then you're going to take your next piece for the snout, which is the same sized panel, and you're going to line it up so that the ridge will be on the wrong side. So I have the wrong side with the ridge, and then when you open it up, you'll have the right side showing. So make sure that you place it correctly before you start sewing. So you can see I have it all lined up. And then I just take my tapestry needle and then sew across just like I did before. I just make sure that the ridges are all on the wrong side. That way you don't have to undo your work or frog it. So now I'm ready to sew on the fourth panel and again I can't stress enough making sure that your ridges are all on the wrong side. You don't want them to be on the right side. And then you just continue sewing the fourth panel, the same sized panel, in place. Then after you finish sewing all four panels together then just fold it up so that the ridge again is on the wrong side and then you can sew it into a circle. So I just go in and out closing it into a circle or a square actually. So now after you have all the sides sewn together and all of the ridges, as you can see, are on the wrong side. Then you're going to take that little panel that goes in the front of the snout and we're going to sew that in place. So again, I have the wrong side facing me. I still have the same colored yarn on my tapestry needle and I'm going to lay the rectangle right on top of the square portion of the snout. Then you can tie one of the loose yarn ends sides together. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tie a knot on the opposite side too because there's a loose yarn end there just to kind of hold it in place. Then you can go ahead and line up one of the sides and then you just take your tapestry needle and then you're just going to sew all the way around securing it in place. So just take your tapestry needle and then you just go in and out sewing this rectangular portion onto the square portion of the snout all the way around and then come back. So then after you finish sewing it in place you can take and turn your work inside out. And now you're ready to make the nose. Now for the nose I'm using my black colored yarn and you're going to take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook go right through the loop then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb and then you're just going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around the hook and then you're going to make a chain of 15 I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial so you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, 
and 4. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. Now, after you finish your chain of 15, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into that second chain from the hook. Then you're going to bring up a loop and then just make a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, we're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch across, except for the last stitch, you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So this is what my work looks like so far. And I have one stitch left. I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch. And as I'm making those three single crochet, I'm going to be turning my work because we're going to be working in rounds. And you're going to be working one single crochet into every stitch back across on the opposite side. And I'm also going to work behind my loose yarn end to bury it. So now I have three single crochet into that last stitch and I've turned my work to work on the opposite side. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the next stitch on the opposite side and behind your loose yarn end and then bring up a loop and complete a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across on the opposite side except for the last stitch. In the last stitch on the opposite side, you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So this is what my work looks like now. And I have approximately 31 stitches in the round. So don't worry if you're off by one or two stitches, as long as you're close to what I ended up with, the stitch count. Then you're going to take your yarn marker, I just use one of my scraps of yarn, place it right where you left off. And now you're only going to place one single crochet in every stitch. So you're going to go into every stitch and just place one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So now this time you should maintain your stitch count. So whatever stitch count that you got for the last round, and for mine it was 31, so that means by the time I reach my yarn marker I should still have only 31 stitches in the round. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. So now when you reach the yarn marker, you're going to leave it in place and just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around. And that yarn marker will help you keep track of the finished rounds. So, so far we finished one round. We need two more rounds completed for a total of three rounds to finish the nose. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around for two more rounds, and then that will give you a total of three rounds completed. Now after you finish your three rounds, then you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to sew the nose on and to also 
make the smile and hopefully you'll have enough to make the freckles. If not, you'll just get more black yarn to make the freckles. So now your nose is ready to sew on. Now for my nose, what I do is because you have a little bit of holes in the center with this working in rounds with this method, I use my black yarn to stuff it. So just cut some extra black yarn to place as stuffing into the center of the nose before you sew it on. So that should be enough for mine. I'm going to clip that amount. And now my nose is ready to be sewed onto the dog's head. But for now, we have to make the dog's head. Oh, actually, we're going to go ahead and sew it on the snout. So we can go ahead and grab our snout and we can sew it in place. So after you get the stuffing in there, I usually have where I finished off towards the bottom of the nose and then I'm going to line it up with the front of the snout. So whatever side that you want on top of the snout, place it up and then place the nose right up against the front edge of the front rectangle of the snout and then grab your tapestry needle to get ready to sew it in place. Make sure that your nose is centered. You don't want it crooked before you sew it on. And then once you have it lined up the way you want to, just take your tapestry needle and you're just gonna sew it into the snout along the front. Now don't worry if you skip too many stitches this first round of sewing is just to secure the nose in place and then you can finish sewing it more detailed on your next rounds of sewing. So I just kind of line it up, make sure it's not crooked as I sew. Just see where I'm at. Yeah. And then I just take, make small stitches on the part that's showing on the nose. I'm just making sure I'm still lined up. Because you don't want your nose crooked, so you want to make sure your nose is straight. And then you just go in and out, sewing it in place. So now I'm finished sewing my nose on, and this is what it looks like. It turned out really well. I really like how it looks. Now you're going to sew the mouth. So you can see how I finished bringing my long black yarn end right in the center of the front of the nose. So if you're almost out of black yarn, you can get a brand new black yarn on your tapestry needle and start with that from the wrong side. So I have plenty, so I'm going to continue making the mouth. So you would come out again right in the center of the front of the nose and then you're going to go straight down to the bottom of the front of the nose. And you're going to want to go right in the center and then go right back through to the wrong side. and then you have one line down the center and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to come back out from the wrong side about halfway up or wherever you want the smile to be on the end of the front of the snout so you can see I'm coming out about Let me see if I can count the, here's the first row here, and then here's two, so one, two, three, four, five row, row, rows up is where I'm coming up for my smile. And then I'm going to go right back in, in the same spot where I went in the first time, back in towards the wrong side for the one side of the smile. 
Then you're going to want to come up from the wrong side at the exact same level that you did on the opposite side and then go back in the same area to complete the smile. So I still have enough yarn to make the freckles so I'm going to come out on one side of the smile and then you're just going to take about a millimeter or two and go back in and then you have one freckle and then I put three freckles So just come out, place your three freckles however you like, however you want them to look. So I'm putting another one right there. And it's probably a little bit different from my other one that I made. So you can just place them wherever you want. And then I usually just put a third one right below. And then I do the same thing on the opposite side. And then that's what mine looks like after placing the freckles. So now I'm going to show you how to make the bottom portion of the mouth. So you're going to start with the same colored yarn as your snout. And you're just going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. Cinch the loop around your hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, make a chain of 15, and then come back. Then, after you finish your chain of 15, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. You're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to place three single crochet into the last stitch. We're going to be working in rounds just like we did with the nose. So now I have one stitch left. I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch. And I'm going to be turning my work as I make the three single crochet into the last stitch. Because again, just like we did with the nose, we're going to be working in the stitches on the opposite side and in rounds. So then I'm going to go into the next stitch behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet. So again I have approximately 31 stitches in the round and I'm going to take my yarn marker, place it right where I left off and this time you're going to be making one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of eight rounds. So we need eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now after you finish eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. This is how your crochet work should look. Then you can take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then you're going to finish off. So just yarn over and make sure you pull enough yarn through to sew it onto the dog's snout. and then you can remove your yarn marker. Then just set this aside for now. You're going to need your black yarn. We're going to put, place a black 
strip right on top of the mouth for the inside of the mouth. So for with your black yarn, again, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And we're going to make a chain of 12. I'm just going to show you a chain of 4 on video tutorial. And then I'm going to have you finish a chain of 12 and then come back. Now you can make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you reach the end, you should have a total of 11 stitches for this first row. So the first chain is just called your starting chain. And then making the single crochet back is our first row. And on that first row, just count your stitches. Make sure that you have a total of 11 stitches. And the reason why it's different from your starting chain is because we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So now, after you finish your last single crochet for the row, go ahead and chain one. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a chain of one. Then go ahead and turn your work and we're going to go back across for our second row. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go not into the stitch below the chain one, but in the next stitch over. Bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And you're going to make a single crochet back across in each stitch. And you should still have a stitch count of 11 when you're finished. Then, when you finish your last single crochet, you're going to chain one again, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet back across, in every stitch back across. And you're going to repeat this, so not counting the first two rows, but counting the row that you're on, you need a total of three more rows. So this one counts as one, and then you're making two more for a total of three more. And if you count the first two, you're going to have a total of five rows. So now I have a total of five rows. So then, after I finish my last single crochet, I'm just going to turn my work. So no chain one. Turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you're finished, you should have a stitch count of 10. So now you have a stitch count of 10. We just finished our last single crochet in the last stitch. Go ahead and turn your work again. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And one single crochet into each stitch except for the last stitch. So in the last stitch you're going to make a slip stitch into the ninth stitch for that row. And then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this piece onto the mouth. So now you finish the black portion and this black portion will go on the mouth portion that we made. But before we sew the piece, actually we can go ahead and sew the piece in place. So this is the inside of the mouth. 
So you're going to place the black portion right on top. Now as you sew, you want to make sure that you don't go through the, the whole mouth. You only want to go through the top portion. So just line up the black portion with the back of the mouth and also make sure that you're even on both sides with the tan portion or color. And then when you're ready, just go through and sew it in place. And again, you want to make sure you don't go all the way through to the back. You only want to go through the top portion only as you sew. So after you've sewn the top portion in place, then you can go ahead and set it aside. We're going to make the tongue. I use my cherry red colored yarn for the tongue and you're going to fold over the yarn to form a loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot and then we're going to make a chain of five one two three four and five and then you're going to make a single crochet Okay, so now you're just going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet in each stitch back across. And that will give you a stitch count of four. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch. One single crochet into the next stitch. And so far I have three stitches. This will be my fourth stitch single crochet, then chain one, turn your work, and again you're going to repeat this until you have a total of four or five rows, depending on how long you want your tongue to be. So for mine I have one, two, three, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, this is my fourth, And then I'm going to make one more row. Now on this last row, you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch, the last stitch, and then go ahead and just finish off. And then yarn over, I mean finish off and then leave a long loose yarn end for sewing. So now just take your long end that you left for sewing and you just want to weave the yarn towards the back end of the tongue to get ready to sew it in place. So you can see how I went towards the back of the tongue. And then you're just going to place the tongue wherever you want it on the mouth, on top of the mouth. Once you find a place that you want the tongue to be then you can take and sew the back edge in place. So just go in and out and make sure that you don't go all the way through to the back. You just want to sew it to the black portion on top of the mouth. And I usually leave the tongue loose on the flap end and I only sew the back end of the tongue.
So with my horse, my crochet horse, I show how to make a crochet pouch. If you like the zipper hidden compartment. But for my Great Dane dog, I'm going to use my fabric to make the pouch that goes inside of the zipper compartment. And I'm using my fat quarter. I got it for only 97 cents. It's 100% cotton and it's 18 inches by 21 inches. And I got mine from Walmart, if you like the one that I'm using. My zipper is 9 inches long and I placed my fabric so that the right side is facing down and then I folded each side in and mine was able to meet in the center. And then I took my pins and I used my 120 long pearlized pins from Dritz. Here's the size. And then I just took four of the pins to hold the fabric in place. So here's one, and then here's my second, third, and fourth pin. And that's just to hold it as I sew it so that it doesn't move. And then you're just going to take your zipper and we're going to sew it along the one side of the zipper. You're going to place it right on top, the zipper right on top and line it up and get ready to sew it. So for mine, I pinned the zipper in place and I'll remove the pin when I get to it with the sewing machine. And then I just carefully sew it in place until I reach my first pin. And you may have to open the zipper too until you get down to the further pin. And then I just move the zipper back up so I can finish attaching the rest of it. And this is what it looks like after I finish sewing it in place. This is what it'll look like on the inside. This is the side that will go inside of the dog, the side, the side of inside where you can see the pretty design. And then this part will be where the stuffing, the craft stuffing is. Then I just took and pinned the opposite side. So I have the wrong side facing up. Now you're going to fold the fabric into a loop. And you have the wrong side on the inside and the right side is on the outside. And you're going to fully open up the zipper and you'll know that you pinned it on the right side if on the opposite side you have where you sewed. And then you're going to take and you can actually sew it from this direction which is fine. So you're going to actually sew it on this side and then remove the pins as you get to the pin. So you can see how I have it set up. So I'm only sewing the one side and I'm only able to do this because I have the zipper fully open. And then I have the foot pedal right up against the zipper as I sew until I reach the first pin. So I just help guide it. until I reach the pin. And then I just keep sewing until I reach the next pin. You can go really slow or you can speed up. I like to go a little bit slow. So for mine, I had to lift the foot of the sewing machine up to get past the zipper a little bit and then I just continued on. As soon as I was able to put the foot back down, I just manually advanced it. And then this is what it looks like on the wrong side. Actually, this is the right side because this will go inside of the bag. And then when you flip it so that the zipper is facing you, this is actually the wrong side. So the part that will be showing will be on the right side. So now we're going to sew the sides and you want the flaps to be facing you 
and you want the zipper to be showing or on the right side towards you because the, the inside of the bag, which is the right side of the inside of the bag, will be facing each other. And we're going to finish sewing the sides of the bag. So make sure you have it positioned right. You don't want this on the inside of your bag. This is, goes on the wrong side. And then we're ready to sew the edges. So just kind of smooth it down so that your edges are even. Then you're ready to sew right down the edge. So I lined up the side of my pedal on the sewing machine right along the edge as I sewed. And then I just did the same thing on the opposite side. Then this is what it will look like on the inside of the pouch. So this is where the person will be able to put items into their Great Dane dog. Then you just take your tapestry needle, and I always use the one with the sharp end with the same colored yarn, and then you're going to take the opening, and I have the right side facing up, and then I just lay, the zipper is open, so I have the zipper open and facing me, and then I only have one side lined up, and then you want to make sure that the zipper will line up on the one end and then just carefully line up the one side and then you're going to sew it in place on the opposite side. So for me, I'm going to start on the zipper side because I want to make sure that the zipper is showing. And so you're going to come up from the wrong side and make sure you're only going through the one side of the bag and you're going to come up through the zipper and the crochet work through the one stitch make sure that you leave a long enough loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work and then you're just going to go a stitch over and then go back through the zipper and the bag. And then you can take and tie a knot. And then we'll bury the loose yarn end later. So just leave that for now. And then you're just going to take and line it up, and then you're going to go back about a um, centimeter over and back up through your work. And then you're just going to go about a stitch over and then back through. And then you're just going to sew the zipper in place on the one side. So now, after you have one side sewn in place, you can take and close your zipper, because you already have the one side lined up where you started. So now you need to line up the other side. So you can see that I have it a little bit long. There's an opening on the end. So I'm going to take, line up my zipper, and then close up the end. So I'm going to take and stitch closed the opposite side there so it lines up with the zipper. So make sure that you lay it flat so that you can see the zipper and where it lines up. Then you can take your tapestry needle and you can close up by making a stitch across lining it up with the zipper. So I'm going to bury that end of the zipper in to the work. I don't want that part showing, so I'm going to go over that part.
and stitch it closed. So after you finish stitching that opening closed, then you can open up the zipper again and then you're ready to line up and sew the opposite side the exact same way. So make sure you don't stitch the two sides together and then just go back sewing the opposite side in place. Make sure that as you sew you allow room for your zipper. For my last stitch I just go right in towards the opposite side and then you can take and bring about a stitch over towards the wrong side of the work. And then bring the other loose yarn end that you had. And then bring that in through the same place that you tied your knot. And then out through the wrong side. And then you can tie a knot on the wrong side. So nobody's going to see this side of the work. Just tie multiple knots. And then just leave a loose yarn end on the wrong side. And then you're finished placing your zipper. So this is what the right side will look like. And you can trim any loose yarn ends if you need to. This is just from the fabric, so I'm going to trim that. And then this is what my work looks like when the zipper is in place. So for mine, I just open and close it a couple of times, make sure it opens and closes. So this part is optional, but I like to use the Sew-In Computer Printer fabric. It works great. And this one I'm using is from JuneTaylor.com, and I actually purchased it at Joann's Craft Store. It comes in 10 sheets, 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And here's some information about it. 100% cotton fabric. This is what it looks like after I choose what I want to... I used my Word program and just created what I wanted on my logo. So now I'll be able to sew this onto my work. This is what it looks like before I sew it in place. Now ideally I would have liked to use my sewing machine, but I forgot, so I'm just going to sew it in place by hand. And I'm going to sew it in place right on the inside of the bag. And I'm just going to use sewing needle, a sewing needle, regular sewing needle and some white thread. And I was able to sew it in place fairly quickly. This is what mine looks like after I sewed it in place. 